Homeschooling numbers surge. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, I'm Florian Heiser and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my stein of coffee and I thought we would read through this article from the Sydney Morning Herald about homeschooling numbers increasing, surging. Now, for those of you that don't know, before we go through the article, I'll just jump to this video here. For those of you that don't know, my wife and I homeschool our children. Right now, Mina is in grade one and Frederick is just about starting kindergarten. And we did a what, one hour Q&A where we answered a whole series of people's questions about homeschooling. And I will link to that video, you know, right here. I'm just leaning over here to check the time. <laughs> I'll link to that video up above so you can have a look if you're interested. I mean, both Rachel and I went to schooling. She went to uh, public and private schools. I went to, you know, High Miami High down the Gold Coast, uh, public school. I think it was notorious for people getting stoned back in the 80s. That's pretty much it. And um, so for us, it was a surprising decision that we don't really regret. We're, we're doing it a bit differently. We're doing it through a private distance education school where we kind of get the best of both worlds. We get the freedom and flexibility of homeschooling and we get the support of teachers and a school. One, yesterday, Mina wanted to do a, a science experiment where she was learning about uh, centripetal motion and forces with a bottle that she was swinging around full of water. So she drew it all up. She was hoping hoping that she would get completely drenched in water and have lots of fun. So she was really disappointed when the water didn't come out of the bucket or out of the bottle. And these are the type of things that as a homeschooling parent, you get to be involved in. It can be annoying, certainly, but it can also be a lot of fun. So Victoria Torrezano has homeschooled her two children for more than a year and describes the experience as a surprise and a blessing and a gift. Well, yes, it is, because you get to spend more time with your kids. Rather than working and earning money so you can pay other people to spend time with your children, you can spend it yourself. And I know everyone's saying all the social issues about kids, but right now, my wife and all my children are at dance school. There is a school run at a local church by a bunch of homeschoolers, and Bina just plays there with all her friends and other kids. They get socialized, guys. They're not weird. The main, the whole stereotype of the antisocial homeschooling child is probably more to do with children that have had to leave the public system and have had to go to homeschooling because of traumatic experiences in the public system or in, in other schooling. You see that a lot with a lot of teasing and, and these other issues, but that's not really the point of this video. So it started because her oldest son then age seven was struggling with school. Well, yes, that's another issue to concern. I'm just looking at the time here. I'm going to link to another video I did, which was an interview with the principal of the school, that, well, the school that we're going to, we're using the distance school, who actually set up a physical campus for all of the students that were just struggling and getting left behind. And some of the stories you can hear about, you know, kids getting to you know, 11, 12 that are functionally illiterate is very sad. And you know, I know Matt Berry isn't a fan of our education system, and I'm not either. He was always pretty good while in the school, but the second he got in the car, he was overwhelmed, screaming, hitting, and would melt down constantly between 4 p.m. and bed, she said. We would get school refusal in the morning and struggled to get him there every day. It eventually got to the point where behavior started happening while at school and right at the start of the year. And it just made us question why we kept pushing him. Uh, sorry, we kept pushing and what we were trying to achieve. The Melbourne mother said she decided to give homeschooling a try after talking with professionals, family and friends, and attending a homeschooling information night. I mean, this is the thing. A lot of people are concerned, oh, can you teach your kids? I mean, Rachel and I, we each have two university degrees and we've taught at university level. And... This may sound a bit, I guess teaching a bunch of first year students isn't that different to teaching a <laughs> preppy or a grade one. <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe that's what's that saying about the generation of, uh, of first year uni students? It's the same, same approach, your, your pedagogical approach to learning. 
I got advice and support from many homeschooling networks and families. But the truth is, you learn how to do it from your child, she said. Well, yes, your, your child, you know, you know what they're good at, um, what they want to do. Yeah. Ours is hands-on relational learning. He needs to experience and explore things for himself at his own pace. So we do excursions and activities and a few classes. Well, yeah, that's that's the best thing about this. I mean, because I'm working from home. You know, this is my office and studio. So I will sit down. I think I'm going to, I'm planning today to do a bit of point cloud work and a bit of game dev uh, today. And um, so I'll probably sit down at the, the sitting desk behind me. So I get to see the kids all the time. It's just peaceful now. <laughs> it is so peaceful. Often you'll hear screaming in the background. So we, we will, what we did, we'll go on an excursion. I know recently we had some free tickets to Australia Zoo and I said, screw it, I don't want to work. Let's take the kids to Australia Zoo. We'll make an excursion of it. It's fantastic. Every time you go for a bush walk, you turn it into an educational activity. And we went to the koala sanctuary near us here and uh, you know, we looked at all the gum trees. Yeah, it's, it's a different life. It really is. And you don't need to go and ask permission from the school to take your kids somewhere on a school day. Our favorite bit so far was probably a driving holiday exploring the solar system and space by traveling from Wagga Wagga to Coonabarabran, following the solar system drive and visiting parks. That is an awesome idea. I think I'm, I'm stealing that idea. So Rachel, when you watch that, we're going to do that. I want to visit parks. Uh, she said one of the many she's one of the many accidental home educators. Dr. Rebecca English from QUT's facility, uh, Faculty of Education said her research has found that parents decided to homeschool after their child was bullied or misdiagnosed and then refused to go to school. Well, you can understand this is a this schooling system we have is what two centuries old. You know, this isn't how people used to learn back in the day, and there were you know, people used to consume much more advanced and sophisticated literature than we do now. Okay, so yeah, I think a lot of it is to do with self-motivated learning. Sitting in a factory pen, copying garbage down from board, so much wasted time. A survey of 441 homeschoolers by, su uh, by support group, the Home Education Network, found homeschoolers do so because they believe they could do a better job, want to be with their children, to offer a tailored education, to help with diverse learning needs, inadequate provisions of school, religious convictions, and a child's physical or sexual abuse. I would add another thing to that, ideological aspects. I know most people would say it's under religious convictions, but I'd say it's a little different. I'm quite concerned with the bias towards girls in our education system and how boys are you know, not are treated as defective girls, to be honest. The number of children registered for homeschooling in Victoria reached a record in 2018. This is no surprise given Victoria's population boom has led to record enrollments in the state schools. And probably because you've got nutcases that are talking about, you know, a nappy consent and all of this rubbish coming out of Victoria down there. There were 5,742 children in more than 3,500 households registered for homeschooling last calendar year, the Victorian Registration and Qualifications Authority said. With more than 971,669 students enrolled in Victorian primary schools uh, and secondary schools at the beginning of this year, this suggests homeschooled kids account for about 0.6% of overall students. I did my first four years of schooling in Victoria. We moved, grew up down there and moved up to Queensland. And it's, it's interesting. I remember watching, like, seeing these kids achieving these things and doing this stuff on TV, you know, starting a business, doing that. And I, got, I kept thinking, how do they have time? Now I realize they're home, they were homeschooling kids. They had more opportunities to do stuff. You can get through a day's worth of work really quick, particularly if your child wants to do it. Uh, the regulator said the number of children registered for homeschooling had surged 44% since 2014, with 2017 a record year. Sue Wright from the Home Education Network said parents rushed to homeschool in 2017 to avoid new rules that require families to submit a learning plan detailing subject matter and when and where that instruction would take place. I mean, look, see, here you go. Here's the government really just screwing it up. That's not going to add any value at all to the process because it's a complete different approach to education. You know, you don't, it's not as rigorous. 
Under the new rules, 10% of home educators are reviewed each year and children must remain in school while awaiting approval for homeschooling. See that? See this? You need approval to teach your own children in the socialist state of Victoria, guys. And I had some dumb teachers, okay? I remember we had this blonde science teacher that didn't know anything. She, yeah, back in high school. So this is, is annoying me that they have authority over your children, not you. Not you, they do. Just think about that, guys. Last year, just 95 extra children were registered for homeschooling compared with 904 new children in 2017. So they're making it harder. They are making it harder. They want to keep your children because it's a union controlled profession. I wouldn't even say it's a profession. Miss Wright said she expected significant growth again through 2019. The, the authority said of the children homeschooled in Victoria, 63% were in families of two or more homeschooled children. An outsized 44% of homeschooling households are in rural and regional Victoria. 76% of Victorians live in Melbourne. There was very little difference in terms of gender. 51% of homeschooled children were boys. Children who were homeschooled ranged from 5 to 17 of age, but most were likely between 9 and 11. Well, yeah, people tend to, you know, often in high school, the kids will go to school by their own choice. Children who are homeschooled cannot obtain the VCE, VCLA or IB diploma, although Dr. English said some children were able to attend university via a TAFE course. Yes, and I mean, there was a, a homeschooling family at our church and the son is doing 11 and 12 in high school. Just a local school. no problem going in there. Just to make sure you can get that. But yeah, TAFE is also an option. Research by Edith Cohen University, Kate Burton and Eileen Slater found that concerns over the level of socialization among homeschooling children was not grounded in reality. Yes, yeah, I know, it, it's a bias that everyone thinks. My one concern is, and this is a very real concern, is because Rachel makes her own clothing. I'm terrified that she's gonna dress all of us up in the exact same like outfit with the same material. And we're gonna be like one of those nutcase homeschool families with all these kids and parents all looking the same. And those are the photos they pull out, you know, when it's in the news. And th that's my, my grave concern. Their surveys of five, 385 uh, Guardian, Guardian, what? Guardians homeschooling a total of Guardians? Shouldn't it be parents? There you go. A total of 676 children found almost half of the children participated in at least one club activity such as yoga, Lego, and chess, and most had regular play dates with other children. Well, yes, that's the thing. Uh, I think you tend to over, over, um, compensate. So Rachel organizes play dates all the time. I, I tell you, without, we've got four here, and then if two or three come over, this house is just insane. It is so noisy. So noisy. Cause I, I was an only child, guys. I, I like my peace. I really do. Miss Terenzo said she would continue to homeschool as long as it was the best choice for the family. The behaviors we're trying to live with practically disappeared overnight, she said. We're spending time building our relationship with the boys while they're young, getting to know them and help them get to know themselves. So there you go, guys. And I will, once again, if you want to learn more about just how we do homeschooling, we answer a series of questions from viewers. Uh, check out this, this live stream. Um, it's only gotten, only gotten 496 viewers. Oh, guys, come on, ramp it up. But yes, so that's an interesting take on it. I mean, we're, we're quite lucky because we do it through a distance at school. So we kind of all the, the requirements for the government department, they handle for us. They manage all that. We have a teacher coming out once a, once a term, does a, you know, test mina and checks everything out. Uh, and yeah, so it's actually quite funny because the principal of the school, he's a vegan. So, and his daughter is friends with Mina and um, Mina's teacher who comes out here, he knows we're, you know, um, keto, or, you know, we, we're doing carnivore because we're having lunch with him, serving him up all these meatballs. And at, at the school camp, he tries to get me and the principal to go at it, the vegan and the carnivore. So there you go. It's, um, well, that's another thing, actually. 
at our school to this the camps we'll i'll go on a school camp with me and we'll go kayaking together it's all part of this so it's a different life guys i'd recommend it but there's one one thing you need a full-time stay-at-home partner one of you needs to commit full-time at home to do this or it doesn't work and that's the challenge but when you can account all the you know do your budget and account all the cost savings and think about just savings in doing more cooking at home it's not that bad anyway guys like share and subscribe let me know what you think are you homeschooling your children or were you homeschooled you know were you homeschooled and turned out all wacky and crazy if you'd like this type of content and want to help me produce more i have a patreon and subscribe star thank you all very much for your support and my new patrons i really appreciate it guys thank you to those of you that are using my amazon links and paypal it's all really helpful and it's quite humbling Thank you all, and I'll talk to you later. Take care.